Hi there, this is Vadim Michalenka from Online Training for Everyone. And in this quick video, I would like to share with you typical questions and answers we see on Microsoft Outlook assessment test. Typically Outlook questions are asked in the form of multiple choice questions, multiple answer questions, true-false questions, as well as simulation question. In this video, I'll share with you different examples we see from the real test. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's look at the very interesting question, which tests your knowledge of Outlook features and capabilities. To create a message, which would allow recipients to provide the feedback that could be automatically tracked, following Outlook option should be used. And there is a list of five options. Choice A. Ask recipients reply to the message and send feedback. Choice B. Develop Outlook macros. Choice C. Use voting buttons. Choice D. Use Calm add-on. And choice E. Design Outlook form. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. When you create new email message in Outlook, you have ability to ask for the feedback. To do that, you need to navigate to the Options section and use Use Voting Buttons button. Another way to access this button is by clicking Tracking and selecting Use Voting Buttons. There are multiple choice for voting buttons. Approve, Reject, Yes, No, Yes, No, Maybe. You can add custom voting buttons by adding the text separated by the semicolon. For example, I added Approve Proposal, Reject Proposal, or Need More Information. If you look at other choices, they may not be valid. For example, choice A, ask recipients reply to the message and send feedback, will not meet the criteria of the question itself, which states that this should be something that automatically tracked. Developing Outlook macros will not allow you to develop the functionality that would simulate getting feedback and tracking automatically. There is no comment on that would meet the functionality criteria and designing Outlook form will not allow you to automatically track feedback from the recipients. So let's recap. Voting buttons in messages allow recipient to vote with results being automatically tracked in Outlook. Voting buttons allow user to request feedback on different topics, create custom survey as needed, and get opinions of the large group of people. So the correct answer is choice C, voting buttons. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let's look at the typical question you might frequently see as part of Outlook assessment test. Which button is used to assign a tag to the email message? And you have four choices. Follow up button, categorize button, unread red button, all of the above. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can come to the correct answer together. If you select email message inside Microsoft Outlook, you see that the tags section shows up in the ribbon. And the tags group has three different buttons, unread slash read, categorize, which has six default choices, as well as some additional things that you can add. But from the high level, any one of these three choices can add a tag to the email message for you to follow up. Let's recap. Follow up, categorize, and read unread buttons are located in the tags group on the home ribbon. Any of these buttons can assign tags to Outlook email message. So the correct choice is choice D, all of the above. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let's look at the interesting, but at the same time tricky question you frequently see on the test. You are planning to attend a three-day conference in a month and would like to reserve the time block on your calendar to let others see this time reserved on your calendar. This time should be scheduled in Outlook as, and you have five different choices, appointment, event, meeting, any of the above, or none of the above. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see how we can get to the correct solution together. There are three different options in Outlook for time reservation, appointments, meetings, and events. Appointments allow user to reserve time on the calendar with no other participants included. Meetings allow user to invite others where user is automatically included. An event is an appointment or meeting which is scheduled to last for more than 24 hours. To schedule an event which lasts more than 24 hours, 
you can start with the new appointment and select the duration of the event as all day and you see an appointment became an event in Outlook. Because this particular time reservation lasts more than 24 hours, the correct choice here is choice B, event. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let's look at the question you might frequently see on the test. A regular time when you need to review current invoices weekly on Friday mornings at 11 a.m. should be scheduled in Outlook as and you have four choices, recurring appointment, repeatable event, recurring meeting, or none of the above. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. To better understand the essence of this question, we need to switch to the calendar view in Outlook. When we switch to calendar view, you can create either a new appointment or new meeting. The concept of the appointment allows you to schedule time with yourself without ability to invite other people. If you invite other attendees, appointment becomes meeting, because now you are allowed to invite required and optional participants. I am going to click Cancel Invitation to convert from meeting back to the appointment, because reviewing of the invoices doesn't require any additional participants. You would need to be scheduling an appointment. Because appointment needs to occur every Friday, you need to click Reoccurrence button to add Reoccurrence. Let's recap. Appointments in Outlook designed to reserve time on user's calendar. Meetings, on the other hand, allow user to invite other people, and user is automatically included into the meeting. So the correct choice here is choice A, recurring appointment. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let's look at the interesting and tricky question you often see as part of the assessment test. You would like to get a confirmation that your email has been delivered. Which Outlook option should you use? And you have five different choices. Choice A, secure message by using digital signature. Choice B, request a read receipt for your message. Choice C, expire message after. Choice D, request a delivery receipt for this message. And choice E, none of the above. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see how we can get to the correct answer together. When you create new email message in Outlook, you can configure available options to make it easy to track the delivery. To do that, you navigate to the Options sections and click on the Tracking extension box. Here in the Tracking properties, you have two different choices, Request Delivery Receipt for this message or Request the Read Receipt for this message. Both of these choices are present here as choices B and D. Because the original question is asking us whether original email has been delivered, the correct choice here is choice D, request a delivery receipt for this message. Let's recap. Outlook provides two different options for track email messages, request a delivery receipt, as well as request a read receipt. The correct choice in our case is request a delivery receipt of this email message. I truly hope you've nailed this question. But if you would like to practice more, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. Now let's look at the tricky question a lot of people get wrong during the test. Outlook signature can be created for, and you have five different choices, stationary, meetings, events, appointments, or none of the above. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. In Microsoft Outlook, if you click New Email, it will create a template for new email. In Email Template, you have access to signatures, which is typically included at the end of the message. By default, there is no signature setup in Outlook, so you can set up a new signature. To do that, you click Signature and then select Signatures. Using this feature, you can set up a signature for all emails or new messages only as well as replies and forwards. And then based on the drop-down boxes, you can select required signature to include either in new messages or replies and forwards. Signature can only be included into new emails, replies and forwarded emails. This is the reason why choices B, C and D are incorrect. Stationary is the feature of Outlook to create a set of unified design elements for the emails. You can access personal stationery when you click on the tab 
in the same signatures and stationary dialog box. Signatures cannot be created for stationaries. So the correct choice here is choice E, none of the above. Let's recap. Outlook signatures can be included into the new emails, replies, or forwarded emails. Stationary is the feature of Outlook to create a set of unified design elements and color themes for making emails consistent. Because stationary cannot be created for meetings, events, or appointments, choices B, C, and D are incorrect. Signature also cannot be created for stationaries. So the correct answer here is choice E, none of the above. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let's talk about best practices on how to get ready for employment assessment test. If this option is available and you have a choice, try to schedule assessment test in the morning when you have highest levels of energy. Get a good night's sleep before the test. And please do not take the test if you're tired, since a lot of questions require your top mental energy performance. During the test, read each question carefully, ideally more than once. Questions are designed to be tricky, and each and every detail in the question might be important. If you have a choice, try to answer easy questions first. This would allow you to leave harder questions for the end, but you will get easy answers in and you will get the points for them. Try to validate your answers with more than one method. For example, if you are doing an Excel assessment test, you can do manual calculation, you can try to use formulas for calculations, use calculator, or use pivot tables to validate your answers. And last but not least, try not to guess the answers, as some providers deduct points for incorrect selections. Let's look at the tricky question, which tests your knowledge of Outlook features. You need to send Outlook email message tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. Which feature of the Outlook you should select to accomplish this goal? And you have five different choices. Create the macros. Do not deliver before. Expire message after. Use follow-up feature. Save as draft and deliver later. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. When you compose Outlook email message, you have ability to delay messages delivery until certain period of time. To do this, you navigate to Options, and in the Tracking section, you click the Extension button to see the message options. Here, you have a choice of selecting when your message will be delivered, and you can do it by selecting this box, Do Not Deliver Before, selecting the date, and then selecting the particular time. After you selected this option, you click Send, and your message will sit in Outbox until predefined time arrives. Let's look at other choices that are available in this list. Creating a macros probably might work, but this is overkill, and this is too hard to do considering we have out-of-the-box feature in the application. Expire message after will not accomplish the same goal. Use follow-up feature. Follow-up is just the flag inside Outlook, which allows you to mark messages for further analysis. And save draft and deliver later. This can be done manually, but it will not ensure that the message will be delivered exactly at 2.30 p.m. because it involves manual component and completely relies on user to doing all of these tasks. So our preferred choice is choice B, do not deliver before. Let's recap. Do not deliver before option postpones the delivery of the email message and allows you compose message now and finalize it now, but schedule it for the delivery later. So the correct choice here is choice B, do not deliver before. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let's look at one of the questions you might encounter as part of Outlook assessment test. How many default categories does Outlook provide? And you have four possible answers here. Four, six, eight, or ten. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. If I open Outlook email message in a separate window, you see that categories are located in a tags group. You can categorize email message by clicking on the Categorize button, and you see that there are six default categories, blue, green, orange, purple, red, and yellow. You can also expand the categories and add additional categories and name it accordingly and assign different colors. Even though you can have more than six categories, the default number is six. Let's recap. 
There are six default categories available in Outlook, and categories can be extended by the user. The six default categories are blue, green, orange, purple, red, and yellow. So the correct answer is B, six. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let me share you smart ways to get prepared for the test. One of the smartest ways to prepare is to find out who your provider is that will be conducting an assessment test and use outlines and sample questions from the provider. The providers might be Indeed.com, SkillCheck, IKM, Kinexa, SHL, and a lot of others. Once you know who the provider is, you can go to their website, find out sample questions, and practice with sample questions. You can also practice LinkedIn assessment test questions on the topic that you will be assessed. LinkedIn test is free, it gives you exposure to the sample questions, and also you can get a badge that will enhance your profile for potential employers. You can also research the topic you're trying to prepare for online and download ebooks to get ready for the test. Hands-on experience is very important. You can find relevant training and follow along to do hands-on exercises using practice videos on the training. If you have a question or ran into an obstacle during your practice exercises, try posting questions in the comment sections of the video. Channel owners or members of the channel monitor the questions and respond to the inquiries. And last but not least, consider subscribing to relevant YouTube channels. I encourage you to consider subscribing to online training for everyone. We have a great community of people helping each other to prepare and pass the test. Let's look at the tricky question, which a lot of people answer incorrectly during the test. To include personalized information with your message, in Outlook you need to use, and there are five different choices, signature, message, business card, stationery, or none of the above. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct solution together. You can include personalized information with the messages that you send. To do that, you need to click on the new email in Outlook and then select Signature. Then navigate to All Signatures and here in this dialog box, you can create personalized signature which would be included with all of your email messages. To include signature with your messages, you need to start by adding the text in the email signature dialog box. You can format the text based on the features that Outlook allows. You can make it bold, italic, or underline, or combination of them. You can also use different alignment features, as well as include some additional information. For example, you can include business card, you can include images, and you can include hyperlinks. As you can see, signature is the correct choice here for this question. Outlook signature can be included with the new emails, replies, or forwarded emails. Business cards can be included into signature, but by default, you do not attach business cards to the email messages. And stationery is a different feature of Outlook. Stationery is available as a separate tab on the signatures and stationery dialog box, and it allows you to define consistent themes for your email messages. So the correct choice here is choice A, signature. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let's look at the very interesting multiple choice question which tests your knowledge of Outlook fonts. Which features of Outlook fonts allow user to change character spacing in email messages? And you have five different choices. Scale, kerning, spacing, position, or number spacing. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. When you compose new email message in Outlook, you have ability to change spacing in the text of the email message. To do this, you need to navigate to the font attributes and properties, which is an extension in basic text group in Outlook's message ribbon. When we click on this extension and navigate to the advanced, you see that the character spacing is composed of scale, spacing, position, and kerning for fonts options. As you can see, choices A, B, C, and D match this composition, and number spacing is not part of the character spacing in Outlook font formatting properties. In fact, number spacing is part of the open type features that is only available to certain fonts that are defined by Microsoft and Adobe. Let's recap. 
To adjust character spacing in Outlook fonts, you can adjust any of the following options in the font dialog box. Scale, spacing, position, or kerning for fonts. Number spacing is only available in font open type features, which can be used for the open type fonts developed jointly by Microsoft and Adobe. So the correct answer here is choice A, C, D, and E. You gotta love these multiple choice questions. They are always the trickiest and hardest to answer. But I truly hope you've nailed this question. Let's look at the very challenging Microsoft Outlook question you might frequently see on the test. Multiple choice. Select all statements below that correctly describe Outlook personal stationery. And you have five different choices. You can define how you mark your comments in personal stationery. MP4 video file can be selected in Outlook stationery. Choice C. With personal stationery, user can specify font, background color, and images. Choice D. In personal stationery, user can select font for new emails. And choice E. None of the above. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see how we can get to the correct answer together. When you create new email in Outlook by clicking New Email button, you have opportunity to personalize HTML formatted emails. To do this, you need to navigate to Outlook Signature, which is right inside the email box, and then select Signatures. In Signatures, you see Personal Stationery tab. Here in Personal Stationery dialog box, you can define particular themes for new HTML email messages. You choose which font you use when you reply to email messages. You can mark your comments with the particular string as you see fit. You can pick new color when replying and forwarding and you can choose which font to use when composing and reading plain text email messages. Even though Outlook Stationery provides you with a lot of capabilities, some features still not available in Outlook Stationery. For example, feature of MP4 file being added in Outlook Stationery still doesn't exist in the latest version of Outlook. Choices A, C, and D correctly describe Outlook Stationery though, and choices B and E are incorrect. So let's recap. Outlook Stationery allows you to personalize HTML formatted emails. With Stationery, you can define how to mark your comments, how to pick a new color when replying or forwarding emails, or how to select a font when composing or reading plain text email messages. Stationery can include predefined themes, active graphics, background images, fonts, bullets, background colors, and image and effects, as well as handwritten signature as image, templates, hyperlinks, and some other things. In this case, the correct answer to the question are choices A, C, and D. Choice A, when you can define how to mark your comments in personal stationery, is correct. Choice C, that states that with personal stationery, user can specify font, background color, and images, is also correct. And choice D, which states that in personal stationery, user can select fonts for new emails, is also correct. Hopefully you've answered this question correctly. Let's look at the tricky question a lot of people might get wrong during the test. Outlook signature can be created for all of the items listed below with the exception of, and you have five different choices, new messages, replied messages, forwarded messages, appointments, or all of the above. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. The tricky part about this question is that this is an exception question. It is asking you to tell exactly which item is not correct. The tricky part about this question is that you need to know exactly which item is incorrect. Outlook signature can be created for the emails. When you click new email in Outlook, you can see that signature can be created for new email messages as well as replies and forwards. Outlook signature cannot be created for appointments and all of the above choice is also incorrect. Let's recap. Outlook signature could be included into the emails. It could be included into new emails, replies, as well as forwarded emails. Signature cannot be included into appointments, so the correct choice here is choice D, appointments. Hopefully you've nailed this question. A lot of students ask me, what are the smartest ways to learn? 
Let's look at the different options available to you. Let me share with you some ways to learn new material that work for me. I typically use dedicated, uninterrupted chunks of time to read and practice new material. When my attention drifts, I try to take a break, and I typically do it every 25 to 30 minutes. I recommend that you download workbooks to practice the hands-on steps, which helps you reinforce the steps and better learn the material. When I try to learn something, I try to watch videos from start to finish in one sitting. I use different playback speed to make sure the material keeps me engaged. I also try to give myself time to absorb the content. And if something is not clear, I try to pause the video, and sometimes I even go back to review material more than once. Let's look at the challenging question you might frequently see as part of the test. Which feature of the Outlook you can use to customize the appearance of the email message? And you have five different choices. Characters formatting, paragraph formatting, themes, stationary, or all of the above. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. You can compose new email message in Outlook by clicking New Email button. In the newly composed message, you can type the text right in the body of the email. You have different options of how you can format the message. When you select the text, you have opportunity to format the text using basic text formatting features. For example, you can make text bold, italic, underlined, or a combination of these features. You have access to some additional basic text formatting features by clicking this extension button and you will see the font formatting features dialog box. You can also change appearance of your message by selecting the text using the right mouse click and choosing the paragraph. This allows you to get access to paragraph formatting options where you can change indents and spacing as well as line and page breaks for this particular text. If you would like to make a permanent change on how your future email messages will appear, you have access to signature signatures and through that you can access to stationery and themes. When you navigate to signatures and stationery dialog box, you can navigate to personal stationery tab and this would allow you to define how theme or stationery for new email messages will appear. You can define among the list of predefined themes and select the one that you like. You can also select some additional attributes for the particular theme. You can also define font for new email messages as well for replying or forwarding email messages right here in the personal stationery. When we go back to the question, you can see that all four first choices can be used to define and customize appearance of the Outlook's email messages. You can use character formatting, paragraph formatting, themes, or stationery. So the correct choice here is all of the above. Let's recap. To customize appearance of Outlook email messages, you can use any of the following. Character formatting, which would allow you to format characters and their attributes in the email. You can also use paragraph formatting, which would allow you to format paragraphs attributes in the email message. You can also use themes, which would allow you to select among predefined themes to change appearance of the email message, as well as you can use personal stationery which would allow you to configure attributes for new or reply emails in Outlook. So the correct answer here is choice E, all of the above. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let's look at the Outlook question, which tests your knowledge of themes and stationery. Vivid color and active graphics can be included when defining stationary themes in Outlook. And there are two choices, true or false. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see how we can get to the correct answer together. Typically, true-false questions are the easier, because you can have 50% chance of being correct. But let's see how we can increase our chances to 100%. When you compose new email in Outlook, you click the new email button, and you have opportunity to define signature and stationery by selecting signature and signatures. In signatures dialog box, there are two tabs, email signature and personal stationery we need to navigate to Personal Stationery and then select Themes. To select themes, you need to click on the Themes button. Selecting particular predefined theme will change how the email that you compose will look like. Each theme contains a lot of special elements, 
And pretty much for each theme, you can select additional background image, you can select additional active graphics, or you can select vivid colors. This will change and define how theme appears in your Outlook email message. So the correct answer in this question is A, because vivid colors and active graphics can be included when defining stationary themes in Outlook. Let's recap. Outlook stationary themes can include vivid colors, active graphics, and background images. So the correct answer to this question is A, true. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let's look at the interesting and at the same time tricky question you might frequently see as part of the test. You need to review current status of the project execution with the team on Monday mornings at 9 a.m. How should this time block be scheduled in Outlook? And you have five different choices. Recurring appointment, event, recurring meeting, any of the above, or none of the above. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. There are three different time reservations that Outlook allows. By default, you can reserve new appointment. When you click on new appointment, you can add a title, and this time block allows user to reserve time on his or her own calendar, where no other participants are included. The concept of meetings in Outlook allows user to invite others, where user is automatically included. To switch from appointment to meeting, you need to click the button Invite Attendees. And you see that the title changed from appointment to meeting. Now you have required an optional fields where you can include participants for the meeting. The third important concept in Outlook is the concept of event, which is an appointment where no other people are invited, and this appointment is scheduled to last for more than 24 hours. And last but not least is the concept of recurrence, which is the feature of Outlook, which allows user to make repeatable time reservations, which would be added to the calendar after a designated time period. For example, to make time block recurring, you can click Make Recurring or Recurrence button right on the ribbon. There are different recurring options, daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly, and you can select day of the week if you have a weekly selection. If you look at the original question, during this particular calendar reservation, other team members are invited. So the correct choice here is choice C, recurring meeting. As we have learned here, other time reservations serve different purposes in Outlook. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let's look at the simple true-false question, which tests your knowledge of Outlook personal stationery and themes. Business card can be included when defining Outlook personal stationery or themes. True or false? Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. When you compose new email message in Outlook, some information can be included by default. You click on the new email and you can select signature. And inside signature, you have options to choose signatures. When choosing the signature, you can include the business card. But this is not what this question is asking. If you read the question carefully, you might have noticed that the question is asking if business card can be included when defining Outlook personal stationery or themes. And if we switch to personal stationery, you see that business card inclusions is not permitted. We can also explore themes, which allow you to define how new email messages will look like based on the predefined themes. And you see that here, inclusion of business card is also not permitted. As you might have figured out by now, the correct answer to this question is choice B, false, because inclusion of business cards is not allowed in Outlook personal stationery or themes. Let's recap. Outlook stationery or theme can include a lot of different things. For example, predefined themes, active graphics, background images, fonts, handwritten signatures as image, templates, hyperlinks, and a lot of other things. But unfortunately, business card is not one of those things that can be included into Outlook signature or theme. So the correct answer to this question is choice B, false. Hopefully you've nailed it. Let's look at the tricky question you might frequently see as part of Outlook test. You would like to get a confirmation that the recipient has read your email. Which Outlook option should you use? And you have six choices. Have replies sent to. Do not deliver before. Expire message after. 
request a delivery receipt for this message. Secure message by using digital signature, or none of the above. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see how we can get to the correct answer together. When you create new email message in Outlook, you have options of how the message will be delivered and tracked. To configure these options, you need to navigate to the Options section. Here, in the Tracking section, you need to expand and go to the details. There are a lot of different choices that you have, so let's look at each one of those in more details. Choice A defines which email address the email will be responded to if recipient chooses to respond to your email message. You can configure different email box if you would like to. Do not deliver before allows you to postpone the delivery of your message. Expire message after allows you to expire the message after a certain period of time, so it's no longer going to be accessible to the recipient. Request a delivery receipt for this message will indicate that the message was delivered to recipient's email box. Secure message by using digital signature allows you to secure the message and ensure that it's not going to be tampered with. The question is asking, how would we get a confirmation that the recipient has read the message? There is a designated option, Request a read receipt for this message, which is not available as one of the choices in the question. So the correct choice here is choice F, because none of the choices A through E meet the criteria of the question. Let's recap. There are two choices in Outlook that help you with tracking. Request a delivery receipt for this message, which allows sender to receive a notification when email message was delivered to recipient's mailbox, as well as request a read receipt for this message, feature of Outlook, which would allow sender to receive notification into Outlook mailbox when message was opened by the recipient. Because second choice is not listed here as one of the valid choices, the correct answer to this question is none of the above. That was a tricky question with six possible choices. I hope you've learned how to answer these types of tricky questions on the test, but if you would like to see more questions, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. Let's look at the assessment test question, which tests your knowledge of Outlook features and capabilities. To prevent message tampering, following Outlook features should be used. Personal signature. Choice B. Mark email as confidential. Choice C. Encrypt the message. Choice D. Save copy of sent message. Choice E. Digital signature. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see how we can solve this challenge together. When you create new email message in Outlook, you have ability to add additional attributes and features to the email message. To accomplish this, you need to navigate to the options and access the tracking features of Outlook. Here, you have access to security settings. There are two security settings. One allows you to encrypt the message, and second one allows you to add digital signature to the message. Digital signatures help prevent tampering, and you add digital signatures to prevent tampering from the message. You have multiple sub-choices. Send this message as clear text signed or request as mime receipt for this message. One of the choices in the question is choice of adding personal signature. You add personal signature by navigating to Message tab on the ribbon and going into Signatures. Personal signatures is something that anybody can add into their email message versus digital signatures, which would allow you to prevent message tampering. So the choice of personal signature in the question is designed to confuse you. Let's recap. Digital signature is the feature of Outlook, which allows digital signing of the email message with digital ID. Personal signatures, on the other hand, is the text added to the email message. It does not provide any security. Personal signatures can easily be replicated by anyone and do not provide any additional security. The digital signature, on the other hand, provides verification of the sender's identity and helps prevent message tampering. So the correct choice here is choice E, digital signature. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You also get opportunity to help other people by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.